Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today I'll read from a book titled Cosmopolitics of the Camera, Albert Kahn's Archives of the Planet, edited by Trond Eric Purli and Kietil Ansgar Jacobsen and published by Intellect Books. Albert Kahn was a French banker, investor and philanthropist. He made his fortune by investing in gold and diamond mines in South Africa. Later, he helped provide capital for the modernization of Japan and became a friend of the Japanese imperial family. Khan began early on to spend his money on various projects designed to promote understanding and peace among peoples. In 1898, he established Les Bourses à Tour du Monde, generous grants for round-the-world travel. They provided newly educated teachers and researchers from France, England, the USA, Germany, Japan and Russia with the means to spend up to 18 months traveling in foreign countries. The goal was, in the words of Henri Bergson, that widely shared feelings and ideas should be drawn by the elites of different countries into the pool of global experience shared by them, furthering the rise of what a great American scholar has named the international mind. Kahn's life is full of riddle and paradox. He was a tough businessman who spent half of his time working hard making money, the other half working just as hard giving it away. Khan devoted his life to civic engagement in Republican France, yet carefully avoided the public eye. The man who thought film and photography had the power to create peace and understanding refused to be photographed. The great organizer of archives left behind only sparse and unorganized sources to, to his life. Most of his personal papers have been lost, perhaps in connection with the German occupation. The archive of his bankrupt bank has also disappeared. Kahn's Around the World Society did have an archive, but in 1940 this was taken to Berlin by the Germans. From there it went to Moscow with the Soviets in 1945, before coming back to Paris in parts in the 1990s. The archive of the Cosmopolitans had itself traveled the world. Albert Kahn was a man of Belle Epoque bourgeois culture. A dynamic entrepreneur, a positivist, pacifist and cosmopolitan, a staunch believer of human progress through science, technology and education. What is unusual is the force of his convictions and his willingness to act in accordance with them. He traveled worldwide in his use for leisure and in connection with his profession as a global investor and this obviously reinforced his belief in the educational effects of travel. As a businessman, Khan was no philanthropist. The mining industry in Africa, which enriched him, was European imperialism at its worst. Khan was not the only major capitalist who turned to philanthropy. This was an age when robber capitalism sought social acceptance and legitimacy through humanitarian generosity. US Americans Andrew Carnegie and David Rockefeller are famous examples. What is unusual about Kahn is that philanthropy eventually came to fill his life and that he gave it a distinctive, almost philosophical form, focusing on the problem of how new media of technological communication could serve the cosmopolitan cause. Kahn ran an investment bank with a global perspective. He brought capital, people, knowledge and resources from across the globe together on projects. Khan the banker was known not only as a long-term visionary investor, but also as a risk taker. In the intellectual world as well, Khan sought to be an investment banker. For this purpose, he acquired grandiose but modern and functional villas at Cap Martin in the south of France and Cornwall in England. The villas lay on the beach, on the borderline between the concrete of the mainland and the open sea of abstraction. Above all, he created the world gardens and the archives of the planet in Boulogne. Here, some of the best known minds of the age were assembled. Great scientists, poets, artists, industrialists and political leaders in order to discuss prospects for a better world. Being a global player in the world of finance, Kahn knew the importance of cross-cultural collaboration. 
In a note distributed to the recipients of the extraordinary around the world scholarship, Khan stressed the need to supplement abstract bookish knowledge with concrete experience. In 1906, Khan organized his Around the World Fellows in the Around the World Society, known also as the Boulogne Circle, or simply the Circle. The young fellows were brought together for Sunday lunches at his Boulogne estate to meet with figures of world renown from scientific, artistic and political life. The aim was to further intercultural cooperation and knowledge building. Leaders in politics, science and the arts from around the world were invited to join or to participate in the meetings. Besides Kant's old friends, the sculptor Auguste Rodin and the philosopher Henri Bergson, one finds the scientists uh, Albert Einstein and Marie Curie, authors Thomas Mann, Paul Valéry, Colette, Anatole France, Tagore, H. G. Wells and Rudyard Kipling, the industrialist André Michelin and the financier Edmond Rothschild, and politicians Léon Bourgeois, Aristide Briand, Ferdinand Boisson, Robert Cecil, and Albert Thomas. Kahn developed his estate as a utopian world garden, supposed to form the perfect context for cosmopolitan conversation and research. The official establishment of the archives of the planet followed in the wake of a phase of technical experiment. In the years 1908 to 1910, Albert Kahn traveled with friends and assistants to China and Japan, to Brazil and to Norway and Sweden, trying out a wide range of supports for what was to become the archives of the planet. In August and September of 1910, Albert Kahn explored Norway and Sweden together with Auguste Leon, the chief photographer and later head of laboratory of the archives of the planet. In addition to Kahn and the cameraman, two scholarly personalities, Jean Brun and Henri Berson, shaped the project. As director of the archives of the planet, Brun instructed the cameraman to provide documentation for the facts of human geography, which he claimed fell into three categories, the productive, the non-productive and the destructive use of the soil. Jean Brun's uh, multi-volume work La Géographie Humaine, first published in 1910, was translated into English in 1920 and was instrumental in establishing human geography as an academic discipline. Human geography studies the shaping of nature by humans and the shaping of humans by nature. Brun accepted to direct the documentation of the world in autochrome color as a counter-term to Kahn financing his professorship at the Collège de France. There was an interest shared by Kahn and Brun in documenting current affairs in a more open-ended, less biased and politically charged manner than in the newsreels of the time. Each photographer brought his or her background, qualifications and interests to the task of documenting the planet. Furthermore, the conditions under which they worked varied enormously between countries and over time. The elusive but persistent presence of Bergson, the most influential thinker of the age, is part of what makes the story of the archives of the planet so interesting. Why did a thinker who condemned the false reality of photography and cinema and who ridiculed the metaphor of memory as archive engage with Kant's visual archive of humankind? Albert Kant's work addresses the elites of society. It seeks to inform decision makers hoping to help them form, through the quality and diversity of the available resources, an opinion that would facilitate an overall well-being and would ultimately lead to the possibility of sustainable peace. Against the background of previous humanist projects which were located at the junction between pacifist and scientific enterprise, the purpose of these new images is to enrich a demonstration, a reflection, a certain discourse on the state of the world. Beyond the documentary aspects, the archives of the planet appears as a true work of propaganda, in the sense of an engaged relationship to reality. 
ask for the book at your local bookstore and if you are in Paris, visit Le Musée Albert Kahn in Boulogne. In 2021, a new exhibition space designed by Ken Gokuma will open to the public as well. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye.